Joe from Cheeky Sport, and welcome back to Kitster. The series that tells you everything you need to know about some of the world's most famous iconic football kits. Today, we're looking at the famous white shirts of Tottenham Hotspur, and it's quite a story. Nobody's really sure what colour Spurs wore in their first ever season in 1882. They only played two games, so it's likely they just cobbled together whatever kit they could find. It was only at the club's first AGM in the following year that it was agreed which colours the team would wear. The decision? A dark blue jersey, white breeches, dark blue stockings, and to top it off, a little cap. Yes. A little cap. That's right, they didn't adopt the now famous white shirts until 1898 and that was only because they wanted to look like Preston North End's Invincible. Spurs just want to be Invincibles, it's never going to happen. In the mid-1880s they had copied Blackburn Rovers blue and white half shirts as the Lancashire club won three FA Cups on the spin and from 1890 to 1895 they even wore red, calling themselves the Tottenham Reds. Can you imagine? They also tried a chocolate and gold vertically striped shirt in 1895 too, complete with navy knickers. And in the lead up to the First World War, there was a plain red shirt with a trendy granddad collar. After they won the FA Cup in 1921, Spurs added the now famous cockerel badge to the shirt. In 1930, Spurs opted for luxury and played in off-white cashmere shirts and white cotton collars. Fancy Dan's. But the makers Umbro soon got rid of those shirts in favour of a Peruvian cotton and Spurs' new Tangaroo shirt would be their official kit sponsor until 1955. After they won their double in 1960 to 1961, Spurs boss Bill Nicholson made the team play in all white, but only in their European games. And it worked too, as Spurs won the Cup Winners Cup in 1963. They tinkled with the crest and in 1966 a more streamlined version emerged, going from this to this. And it wasn't long before new manager Terry Neal changed it again though, as the one and only Ralph Coates demonstrates. In 1983, Spurs introduced a new club crest in a bid to see off the threat of pirate replica kits. The crest now featured two lions supporting the cockerel and the club's Latin motto, Oder e facir, or to dare is to do, and it got the thumbs up from Gaza. They've had many manufacturers over the years. In the early years, their kit was made by the tailors H.R. Brooks on London's Seven Sisters Road. Bookta, remember them? Well, they stepped in to make the kit from the 1920s, before Umbro took over in the mid-1930s, keeping the deal for 40 years. That's when Admiral took over and all hell broke loose on the design front. At times, it seemed like if you could sew, then you could make his first kit too. Le Coq Sportif had a go, and to be fair, they produced this cracker. As did Hummel, who threw in a few chevrons. In 1995, Pony came in, and it was a case of Pony by name, well, you know the rest. Then Adidas. Then Kappa. Puma got a five-year deal in 2006. And they made this special kit to mark the club's 125th anniversary, honoring the shirts of 1884. An Under Armour shirt featured technology that could measure the player's heart rate. Today, it's Nike that are making the kit. They signed a 15-year deal with the club in 2018, reportedly worth 30 million a year. That will help pay off that new stadium for sure. Joel here from Cheeky Sport and you've been watching Kit Story. Make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe. Peace.